thanks for joining me in my shop here. Hey, I'm all ready to do the IF alignment on this radio. And you can see, just move the camera here, help you get a perspective on things. So I've got lots of lead wires connected to the radio. What this is, is two s signal generators. These two red clip leads are coming from the two signal generators in my shop, this big one. And the sweep one here both connected into the grid cap on the 6K8 tube, which is the mixer tube. So we're going to inject a 455 signal uh, into this grid, and it's going to pass through the two transformers here, one there, one here, and those are what we're targeting to adjust on the radio. You can see on the scope, uh, nothing showing. Let me just turn up a little bit of volume here. Okay, so the scope is uh, essentially uh, displaying what it is we're hearing. The tone is coming right out of the speaker. That's what's going right on the scope. And you can see the nice uh, curve there. Fantastic. Now, Frequency counter. Let me see if I can figure out how to get that. Get that on here. Good. You can see the frequency of this big generator. Now, the IF frequency is 455. So I've got 450. I got 446 coming out of here right now. So I'm going to move that. I'm going to change the frequency of this generator. The sweep generator is sweeping from. 20 below 455 to 20 above 455. So this should be 435 and this should be 475. Just there. There we go. So we expect this to be dead center of the scope, but then I can't set the start and stop of the sweep exact. So we're going to use the single frequency, the big military signal generator, put a 455 signal on top of this, and we should be able to spot where 455 really is on this display. So here we go. Okay, so you see something come up the left side and go down the right side. Let's come back. Just watching the display. I would say the frequency of the single generator is now matching the peak of this curve, which is sound of the gun, 455, right on the money. So I know it's in the right spot. Now is it as big as it can be, or will adjusting these transformers give me a little more signal? That's the big question. So let's go do it. Let's see what happens. First I gotta pick myself a nice tool here. carbons, um, uh, some kind of uh, slug in here, of course. I'm going to try with this first. I don't think this, I think this shaft here is too big to begin with. That's not working. Let's try something else here. So right now I'm just trying to make sure I got a tool that's going to do the job. Hard to tell if that's actually turning the slug or not. I think it is. Oh, I can see it moving on the scope. Ah, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 455 spot on the scope right to the center. Okay. So I can turn the 
single frequency generator out of the way. And I know that I gotta maintain this curve right on this line. Just try to make it bigger. So I think we found with this we So looking at the shape of it, the shape is excellent here. A little higher over there. Okay, let's try the same coil down underneath. I gotta come at it from the bottom here. sure I can do this on camera because the camera's right where I need to stand. Let's see. Where's the hole? The hole is buried under parts. Uh oh. so well in terms of the camera, so I'm just going to put this back here. You're going to be watching the scope anyway. Me too. Just leave that like that. You don't have to trust. I'm sticking that. Okay, so I think I'm in there now. Let's turn. Yep. Toppy thing. What happens if I turn this one? Well, it feels like it only goes one way. Advantage here. <clears throat> Let's try the other coil now, the other transformer. Quite a change in the shape. Oh, you can make it a little broader up here, roughly the 3 dB point down here. Make it a little broader with this one. If I'm not hearing any bass, this, this, this might improve. Seems to wiggle the right, the right side of the curve more than the left, but that's because I'm actually moving the peak of this coil off to the right. Bring it back in. Okay, let's try underneath. I mean, I did align this radio back when. perfectly aligned. Let's see that it's no matter what I do I can't get the speed to come up any higher than this. Shape is nice. Uh, I think that's really all I think that's it. I think I think that's the IF alignment. Wow, that was easy. Now things alignment from here on not so easy. Okay, so the next step here is to uh, set the IF trap. Uh, that's a little tank circuit right on the antenna, and its purpose is to catch and drain away any 455 signal that could be coming in the antenna to affect this radio, 
or leaking out of this radio onto the antenna to bother other radios so the trap is going to trap anything that's going by the uh, trap coil if you like is, uh, is this guy back here so that's the one I'm going to want to adjust right back there now here's the thing of course my schematic and the not not the schematic so much but the instructions for alignment don't talk about an AM antenna versus a short wave antenna you know, these wires out here doesn't talk about it because I think the instructions for the alignment don't anticipate there being anything more than one antenna connection on the back when I look at the schematic the trap is arranged close to this uh, let's call it the, the Canadian shortwave antenna input if I can call it that the British antenna input um, it's also connected in a way to this trap so even if you were to feed in you know an AM signal on the loop antenna here or a signal on the shortwave antenna each each one I think this trap is going to catch I think Anyway, we'll just we'll just do what the instructions say, and uh, it's pretty straightforward here. Basically, it's feed 455 right into the antenna. So for me, the antenna just need a good ground point here. The radio's not on yet, by the way. The antenna will be the short wave antenna. Okay. I'll make sure this is 455. Just pull it like that. Good. And uh, I guess we'll switch on the radio at this point. Let's see. So it's on setting number one. There we go. Give it a moment to warm up. Uh, let's turn it up a little bit. And we're going to want to do this uh, on the short wave band because in this radio, some antenna switching takes place as you switch the band switch up here. Okay. Now the thing is we're feeding in the IF signal into the antenna. That's not a normal place for the IF signal to go in a radio during its operation, but that's specifically done so the signal is passing by, if you like, this uh, trap arrangement and uh, some of the 455 is going to make it all the way through the radio through the IF and out the speaker so we can hear it uh, let's get this ready here we don't hear anything right now um, maybe a little more signal the trap could be working I mean the trap I, I, assumably I aligned this the last time I aligned the trap Putting out a fairly heavy signal here. No sign of it. Well, that's good in a way. Let's give it a real. I heard a pop. Okay, how come I can tune it in? I shouldn't be able to tune it in like that. That's not supposed to happen. So what what band am I on here? Let's see. Oh my gosh. Okay, how long did that take? Uh, about four minutes for <laughs> things to fly out of control. I've got it on the AM band setting. The tone is coming through loud and clear. And I just finished talking my way through the idea that uh, this is all about the shortwave side of things. <laughs> yeah, see. Not sure what that is. Why couldn't we hear exactly this when I flip it over to? Short wave. 
we have another whole stage of tuning in the short wave side. Maybe that stage of tuning is enough to actually knock out the 455. Maybe this really is just a concern on the AM band. Well, let's see what we can do here with, uh, with what we've got. Now, if I just move my camera over a little bit, I think you can... Yeah, it's not going to work too well. You see this meter up here? You need to have a close look at that meter. Oh, there we are. Okay, so I'll change the volume here. There, you can see that. So, let's just make sure now we're right on for... Um, that's turning the signal generator to maximum. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to adjust that coil and just see if I can knock this out, or knock it down anyway. There's so many holes in this radio. It's to put the <laughs> put these through. Okay. Now watching the meter. Oops. Well, that was out a little bit, I would say. certainly didn't make a difference. So that's that's knocked the signal down. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be, if it knocked it down here, it'll knock it down on any band. Short wave. Don't hear a thing. Anyway, perfect. Okay, so I think that pretty much takes care of the IF alignment on this radio. Uh, didn't make much difference to the IF itself, but big difference on that uh, on that trap. Excellent. Okay, so now what lies ahead is starting to do all these coils up here. Uh, that's where that's where the rubber will meet the road. Hey, thanks for watching.